Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here for another episode of Prehistoric Subject Files, and today we're going to do it on one of my favourite, if not my favourite, uh, prehistoric mammal, and it is Paleoloxodon. Now, Paleoloxodon was a gigantic elephant-like uh, species. Um, it was first described in 1924. Possibly lived till uh, 3,000 years ago, although some people, some scientists actually debate that it actually it went extinct 30,000 years ago. Um, it, pos it evolved around 4 million years ago and existed all the way to 30,000 years, which is quite a substantial reign for a, uh, for a mammal, especially an elephant. Um, now, they can also be known as the straight-tusked elephants because they're characteristically straight tusks compared to other elephant species. Um, they've been found in many places, such as, I'm going to probably butcher this, but Bilzigben, um, I think, uh, Germany, Cyprus, Japan, India, Sicily, Malta, and Britain. And, uh, yeah, so they've had quite a large range, um, across the Northern Hemisphere, and also, I believe, some may have actually, well, obviously some have gotten to the, uh, Southern Hemisphere, so it's a very widely distributed, uh, genus, um, there's also some remains in Africa as well, but I will get onto that. Another cool fact about this particular genus is that when they were building the second channel tunnel, they actually found remains of the one of the European species of Paleoloxodon, and I think that's quite cool. Now, in Kent, Britain, in 2006, a 400,000-year-old adult specimen was found, and it was actually found with Paleolithic stone butchering tools as well as the marks from these tools, and it's been um, speculated that maybe... Um, the common species of human at the time, uh, Homo heidenbergensis, so possibly our direct ancestor, was actually at the time hunting these large uh, elephant species, and it's possible that they may have coordinated hunts, and they may have actually hunted them regularly, and may have actually just been scared off by some animal if they had to leave the tools behind, or maybe the tools were broken, I don't know. But I do know that they actually hunted this particular genus of elephant, and it's quite surprising that they actually would, because it's such a large and dangerous animal, in my opinion, from the looks of the fossils. Now, one particular species of Paleoloxodon, known as Paleoloxodon namidicus, uh, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, is actually uh, considered to be the largest, uh, based on uh, weight estimates as well as possibly height, but possibly the largest land mammal that ever lived. Now, the specific species known as Paleoloxodon antiquus has actually been found to be more closely related to the African forest elephant known as Loxodonta cyclotis than actually uh, Loxodonta cyclotis is to the African bush elephant, which is known as Loxodonta africana. So, that's quite strange. Um, I don't know why that is, but apparently Loxodonta cyclotis is more, is more closely related to... Well, basically the Paleoloxodon species that I just mentioned, than it is to its sister taxon, which is really weird. So I don't know if they're proposing uh, some maybe some interbreeding, but I doubt it because um, apparently Paleoloxodon antiquus uh, might have actually not gone so far south. So it, it could be, or it could just be that there may be some there may be some arguments that maybe that this animal is more closely related to the African bush elephant and the African elephant as a whole than it was apparently to the uh, Asian elephant, because I remember that the Asian elephant was considered the closest and uh, the closest living relative to Paleoloxodon. Now, a fun fact about the extinction. Now, the last uh, population known of mainland European uh, Paleoloxodons might have been the last of the particular ge of the species of the genus, but apparently they actually faced extinction during a period of time around th uh, 30,000 years ago. So this is around when the, I think, when the Ice Age was beginning to come to an end. So sadly, this particular genus was actually dying out around that time. Additionally, there has been some debate to whether actually Paleoloxodon species might have actually survived longer in Japan. So it could be that they've actually survived longer uh, than the actual European species. In fact, fossil remains of an undetermined uh, Paleoloxodon species have actually been dated from northern China to be about 3,000 years old, and possibly, due to their morphology, they might actually be the descendants of Paleoloxodon nomadicus, which is, again, I said the largest species, so it's possible that this species, this undetermined species, might be even bigger, or maybe it's possible that this un undetermined species might be smaller due to 
the extinction because if you if you think about it a lot of elephant species have actually been found to actually adapt to their environments quite well by dwarfizing so it could be that these northern species these northern uh, china species may have actually adapted uh, and grown smaller maybe dwarfized because of the extinction rate now there is some evidence to back this up because uh, recently there was a bronze ritual vessel i think it's called uh, that was actually found with a elephant um, animal that has two fingers on its trunk and that has been associated with paleoloxodon but however there is some debate to actually say that maybe this is actually a heavily stylized um, elephus maximus which is the asian elephant and this is because the asian elephant actually has only one finger on its trunk and it could be it might be but if this if the particular undetermined species of paleoloxodon shows anything that shows that maybe this animal actually survived a bit longer but in a, maybe a smaller population and due to the climate change may have actually died out altogether or maybe because humans were around maybe they actually killed it off and maybe the remains were so few because the actual population was very small now the first species I'm actually going to talk about is Paleoloxodon antiquus and Paleoloxodon antiquus was the European species that I probably talked about, I don't know, I just read it from an article, but it lived from 781,000 years to around 31, uh, to 30,000 years in Europe and may have actually been the last of the, one, well one of the last of the Paleoloxodon genus to actually go extinct. Additionally, there is some debate as to whether actually uh, the Asian species, which is slightly, which is larger, uh, known as Paleoloxodon nomadicus, is actually sometimes regarded as possibly a variant, a morphological variant, or maybe a subspecies of this particular species. Now, there is some debate to that, but in my opinion, I believe that these are two separate species due to the morphological differences between the populations. Now, Paleoloxodon was quite a large animal. It was around 4 to 4.2 meters tall, possibly weighed in at around 15 tons, and had an 80 centimeter long tongue, and it probably had the ability to actually forage for food about 8 meters above the ground. Now, uh, some, characteristics, some morphological characteristics of it is that it had slightly larger and longer legs than modern day elephants. Uh, some other behavioural differences may have been that it actually lived in herds of up to 15 individuals, uh, preferred a warmer, woodier climate, and in colder uh, climate periods, it would have actually moved uh, to basically move to the south to actually it would have migrated to, to the south to follow the you know sun and get away from the cold. Now. Specifically in Britain, it actually died out around 115,000 years ago. Now I say Britain because I'm I'm not I'm I'm just saying Britain. I'm not saying all of Europe. It's just Britain, and they last actually became extinct apparently in Portugal around 30,000 years. Now this particular species is actually the subject of the 2006 specimen that was found in Kent that was found with the buttering marks from the Homo uh, heidelbergensis. And that was a particular, uh, I think it was an adult male, and it was obviously found 400,000 years ago. So it was uh, around at the prime of this species' existence. Now, a German specimen was actually found with spear tips in between its reds, so this species actually experienced a lot of hunting from early humans. Another European space species was uh, Paleoloxodon chaniensis, which was also known as the straight tusked pygmy elephant. Um, it was actually found in Stylos and the Vamos Caves in uh, Chania and West Crete, and it was discovered back in 2000, and that's about the only information I can actually find on it. But obviously it was an elephant, it was a Paleoloxodon species that actually evolved to dwarfize, possibly meaning there's a lack of food in its environment, so that's why it actually dwarfized. The next species I'm going to talk about has, uh, I think, two names. It's known as Paleoloxodon cyprotes and uh, Elephus cyprotes. Um, it's also known as the Cyprus dwarf elephant. Now, Paleoloxodon cyprotes was found in, well, Cyprus. Um, the largest specimen, I believe, was one meter tall and possibly weighed at 200 kilograms. Uh, and they apparently reckoned that it dwarf eyes due to lack of resources. Now it's estimated they possibly became extinct around 11,000 to 9,000 years ago. Uh, it was discovered back in 1902 and its actual remains may have actually given rise to the uh, Cyclops myth because they believe that Greeks may have actually found the skulls and believe that these animals were actually Cyclopses but uh, as we can as you as we know that's not true anymore. 
the next species is another uh, small Paleoloxodon species. It's known as Paleoloxodon falconeri or Elephus falconeri or also known as the pygmy elephant. The pygmy elephant was discovered back in 1870, uh, 1867 sorry, by George Busk. Um, now, there is some sexual dimorphism in there. The females have been estimated to be about 80 centimetres tall and weighing 168 uh, kilograms, while the males are 96.5 centimetres tall and possibly weighed in at around 305 kilograms, so that's nearly double the female's weight, so that's quite impressive. Uh, it's believed that the ancestors of this particular species may have actually arrived uh, to the Mediterranean islands during the Ice Age, because the, uh, at the time of the Ice Age, the sea levels were actually lower. And this animal would have been able to migrate to these islands and may have got stuck on this island and actually dwarfized because of the isolation. Um, also, these animals might have also uh, actually helped along with Paleoloxodon cyprotes uh, with the um, uh, Cyclops myth. But and as I say, the Cyclops myth really isn't true. <laughs> the next species is called Paleoloxodon Nadriensis or Elephus Nadriensis, uh, sorry for that. Um, it was discovered in 1874 and is apparently 90% the weight of its larger and uh, larger relative Paleoloxodon antiquus. Uh, larger specimens are around 1.8 to 2 meters tall and it possibly weighed in at 1,100 kilograms. The next species we're going to talk about is Paleoloxodon. Namadicus, uh, which was the Asian straight tusked elephant. It was found in India and Japan and it's regarded as a subspecies of Paleoloxodon antiquus because there is some very similar features in the tusks. Now in 1905 in India a 165 centimeter thigh bone was actually found and the specimen was actually estimated to be 4.5 meters tall. The largest individual and possibly the largest land mammal ever uh, known was a individual that measured 5.2 meters tall and possibly weighed in at 24 tons. That's a huge animal. That's a monster. That's even heavier than the uh, genus Intracotherium or Paraceratherium, if you want to call it that. The next species we're going to talk about is Paleoloxodon normanni. Now, this particular species is in honor of Heinrich Edmund Norman, and uh, it was discovered in 1860. It lived from 500,000 to 15,000 years ago and actually is characteristic of its large tusks which were around 2.4 meters in length and had a diameter of around 20 centimeters and it also adapts to cold environments with a large layer of fat as well as uh, long hair. Uh, this particular species was possibly around 2.5 to 3 meters tall. Uh, specimens found at Lake Norjiri uh, were actually found with stone tools, so it's possible that this animal would have been hunted by early humans or early settlers of, of Japan. Now, the final species we're going to talk about is known as Paleoloxodon reci, and it was discovered in 1890, lived from 4 million years to 600,000 years, um, as possibly the oldest of the species, um, or the genus. Um, now, the oldest individual recorded was a 40-year-old male specimen that measured 4.2 Two seven meters tall and possibly weighed in at 13.6 tons. Now this species lived in Africa and there are five subspecies uh, currently. There is, and this is from uh, oldest to youngest, there is Paleoloxodon reci brumtii, Paleoloxodon reci sungarensis, uh, shungarensis, sorry, uh, there's Paleoloxodon reci atavus, Paleoloxodon reci illyrentius, and Paleoloxodon reci reci. Now, there is some controversy around these subspecies because it's actually believed that because these subspecies actually overlapped and weren't separated by time or place, that these are actually just morphological variations within the species and these aren't actually different subspecies and these actually just represent one species and one subspecies. Now, there we go with Paleoloxodon. I know it's a long video, but so what? Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you've, like, got some new information on Paleoloxodon. I, I find this elephant species, or well, this genus, quite fascinating and how it's versatile and how it's just got a great biodiversity. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you later. Bye-bye.